So good morning, everybody. I am uh, really delighted to be uh, with you this morning. And um, you know, uh, uh, I love Washington. It's a lovely city, despite the fact that some people were saying it's chilly out there. For the pe my colleague at Hydro Quebec, it's pretty warm. So, <laughs> so thanks for uh, for having us and uh, and giving us the opportunity to uh, talk about our company that uh, that we love. Um, so I'll go, I guess you can see that, yeah, good, that works. So maybe uh, what I was planning to do this morning is to give you uh, just a little bit of context on who is Hydro-Quebec, so we'll start with that. And then after we'll talk about where Hydro-Quebec wants, uh, wants to go, what's our future and how do we see our role, uh, how do we want to play a role into some of the objectives that you uh, just mentioned a few minutes ago. So maybe if I give you just a little bit of our context, uh, we're quite a, a, a unique facility because Hydro-Quebec does produce, we do transmission of electricity, and we do also distribute. We have 4.2 million customers to serve in, uh, in Quebec uh, alone, and we do export, as you know, probably 30 terawatt towers uh, a year uh, between, I would say, New England is about half of it, uh, New York about 25%, and the rest between Ontario and, uh, and New Brunswick, two, uh, two other provinces. So. Just uh, also to give you a little bit of context, uh, as you can see here, uh, 63 generating uh, power station uh, installed everywhere in Quebec. Uh, we have uh, 93,000 miles of transmission and distribution line because definitely one of the uh, thing that we've worked the most over the last, uh, you know, probably the last 50 years was our transmission system. The uh, power station with the big dam are way up north, you know, thousands of kilometers or hundreds of miles, and we need to bring that power. We actually have a DC line actually coming straight into the United States, and we use that line to, uh, to, to export some of our electricity. And, um, and, and that's very useful because we, so we've been challenged, of course, technically over the years with this. Uh, we were the first one in the, in the 60s to produce electricity, uh, uh, you know, distribute electricity with, uh, uh, 737,000 volt, um, 735,000 volt actually. So, uh, so we've been challenged because of the size of our uh, of Quebec, and you can see that on the uh, on the next page. So, uh, so this is more than a million, uh, you know, mi a square mile. Uh, actually, just to give you some perspective, it's 12 times bigger than the New York State and about eight times more than New England uh, altogether. So that's, uh, that's uh, and it's only 8.8 uh, 8 million people, a little bit more than 8 million people. So we have a lot of space actually per, uh, per person if you look at it. The one thing I think that is unique about uh, uh, Hydro-Quebec is clearly uh, our context that 99% of the electricity we are producing is clean and, and is renewable and reliable. So we are very proud of that. This is, this is a choice we've made, I would say, going back 50 years ago, where we had the choice to go into nuclear, into, uh, into, uh, into uh, uh, hydro, big hydro. And we made that choice. I don't know how conscious we were at the time of all the attributes that are being looked at today about renewable, but we feel being in a, in a sweet spot today because you know, this is helping us uh, you know, with the challenge we're all facing in terms of uh, reducing carbon emission uh, around the world, and 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 this is a, this is a situation we we love to be in, of course, and we think that we can contribute actually, uh, you know, more uh, around the world in in helping that challenge that we're all facing uh, together. Just to give you a bit of context, also on the financials and where we are, so our revenue last year were 13.7 billion dollar. We are financially very healthy. Uh, we did, uh, you know, generate a net income of $3.1 billion. As you know, we're a crown company, so we're 75% of, of this goes to, as a dividend to our government in Quebec. And of course, on top of it, we're paying taxes. So uh, we're, we're, we have a significant contribution to, uh, to our province. Uh, so if you look at it also, we are in Quebec the biggest investor. Uh, just in Quebec alone, we invested $3.4 billion last year in terms of, of you know, uh, improving our equipment. We're, of course, building a new, on the, on the La Ramen River right now, uh, four new power station, which is gonna be at the end of the project, uh, close to 1.6 uh, megawatt of, of new uh, power. Uh, we have about 20,000 employees, okay? 
and uh, the installed capacity today that we have, we have available 44 because we do have wind power also that we're purchasing, but installed capacity for Hydro-Quebec is almost 37 megawatt. I think I need to mention two things here, uh, a couple of things. First of all, um, one of the great assets that we have at Hydro-Quebec is our R&D center. So we've, be, we've been building on, and on the capability of that R&D center and we've been investing in it year after year for 50 years. So we have a lot of invention, a lot of things that have made our network what it is today. It could be by software, it could be multi-DC terminal, it could be a lot of technology that we've developed, also working with other uh, utilities. But we've always been uh, taking a, a great pride of investing in technology that brings us to the next brings us to the next level. So today, it, it puts us in a nice situation. We have a complex network, but we also have a very reliable network. Uh, you know, uh, our network has been, despite you know the conditions we're working in, a, a, a very reliable source. We do play a role also, uh, as I said, and th this is just uh, to, to share with you, uh, electrical, uh, electrical car in Quebec are 50% are of the electrical car in Canada. And one of the reasons why it's important for us in Quebec today, 40% of our emissions, gas emission, comes from the, um, all the cars. Uh, and and we, so this is something we have to address. So the more electrical car we have, the less carbon footprint we have. And it's important because we are charging you know, those batteries with renewable energy okay, that comes from water. So it, again, it, it helps us in, in, in that unique situation, uh, reducing our carbon footprint uh, you know, uh, quite significantly over the, length, the next few years. So we are Agro Quebec playing a role. We have like 600 uh, charging stations right now, and we're planning to have 800 by the end of this year. And we're starting to talk with our neighbor, you know, uh, either provinces or state, about extending our network so that we can work together and people can be member of our electrical uh, uh, of our circuit that we are uh, we've developed over the years. I think the one thing I need to mention, and this is the, the bottom of the slide is we are very fortunate. Uh, the choice we've made 50 years ago put us in a nice spot also financially because we are, uh, as you just saw on the, on, on the other page, you know, a very profitable company, almost 25% uh, return on our sales. But when you look at the price of electricity, we have the lowest rate in North America. So if you look at uh, this uh, example here, it's about what you pay $72 in Montreal because people pay at invoice they get at home 7.2 cents per kilowatt hour so 72 per megawatt uh, you go to Toronto it's double okay and if you go to New York and Boston it's quadruple so we are in a unique situation and we're very fortunate so I think the choice we've made a uh, long time ago uh, you know are helpful so big hydro is always challenging from the start because you know this is a huge investment you make but then after you have full control over your cost because it's almost just about depreciation and those, those you know, power stations are there for 125 years and maybe even more, we don't know. But uh, you know, today we look at what we've built 50 years ago and we believe it's gonna be there for another 100 years easy. And we are, we're well maintaining, of course, our equipment, but uh, so the big investment that you have to do upfront, then uh, after I think uh, really uh, you know, help you uh, with uh, controlling your cost along the way. So, um, Maybe one thing, I'll be a, a little bit provocative here. Uh, one thing that's very important is greenhouse emission. Every source of power, okay, generate green emission. So none of them don't. But I think it's important to look at the full picture. And in Hydro-Quebec, we had scientists. We've worked with a lot of university biologists and, and, and different uh, skill trade to understand over the life okay, of a, a, a either a gas station or a big hydro plant or, or just a, a, a uh, you know, a power station, a, a hydro power uh, uh, through the river, you know, what is generated? And of course, you know, a lake generate emission, okay, a, a pure, uh, you know, a natural lake. So of course, when we build those big dam, it generates emission a lot more in the few, uh, it's, a, it's, it's a, you know, a natural process, you know, that, ha that takes place at the beginning more but when you look at over the life, you know, of how long this is going to last, the, the, the fact that you have a construction and then you almost doesn't need to touch it or replace it for many, many years. When you look at the all life, so it puts us in a, in a situation where 
the hydro, big hydro, is about equal to wind, you know, clearly less than, than uh, uh, photovoltaic because you need to replace it more often. And we're taking into account here the, the, the production process, really looking at the whole picture. So we have hundreds of thousands of pages of studies done by different, and we always came to that conclusion. So it shows you that for sure, uh, you know, toward, if you compare with nuclear, if you compare with ga natural gas or uh, uh, coal, uh, we have a huge advantage, a huge advantage. So we feel that, uh, you know, this is, those are big projects, but when you have those projects, you can carry on for a lot of years and, of course, benefit of, of those results for, uh, for uh, generations. So this is the situation of Hydro-Quebec today. So what do we think and, and what do we see for the future and what our role will be? So um, I, as we mentioned earlier, I just came into this job last summer, and I think one of the, the, the things was, okay, what do we do next? We have a very solid ground to start with, but how do we evolve Hydro-Quebec? So clearly, uh, we, uh, we identified four priorities, and the four priorities are customer satisfaction. So we really need at the distribution level to improve our call-in center. You know, we receive millions of calls every year. Uh, you know, how do we, uh, are we good at predicting, you know, work when people are asking us to do work, you know, giving a delivery date and delivering on time. So a lot of work has to take place there and we're already doing that. We've worked with our unions, you know, which we have a good relationship with and, and we're making some significant changes right now to, uh, to improve it. Productivity uh, is always a challenge. Uh, so we've been working on a lot of things, especially on, on the uh, information system, which we, uh, we thought we were spending more money than we should. So uh, we reorganized it. We're working also on how we procure, how we do the procurement internally. But also we worked on communication. Communication was important and we were like the big crown company basically looking at itself and enjoying you know, the fact that we are uh, you know, uh, uh, almost a, a quasi monopoly in, in Quebec. But I think, you know, that for customer satisfaction, we should be a reference, okay? Because we are a, a, a almost a monopoly, we should be a reference in terms of customer satisfaction. And in terms of communication, we have to go out there. We have to explain Hydro-Quebec. We have to help the people in Quebec to understand what we do and why we do this. And we were really absent for a few years, and I think now uh, we're taking a lot more space. And, and uh, you know, you've seen it, you know, we, we're, so we're gonna be here, we're gonna be out there explaining Hydro-Quebec more and more. A very important piece for Hydro-Quebec. When I came in, one of the things that was obvious to me is our company is gonna have very limited growth if we just provide power in Quebec. Okay? So we're 13.7 billion today. If we don't do something different, you know, a company that has no growth, as you know, over 10 and 15 years can really see its financial deteriorating quite significantly that we can have our profit disappear. So the big question, and we, we put some, a, a lot of thought into it, so we, well, it was basically, okay, what are we good at? How can we contribute also to the challenge that we're all facing together about reducing emission, and how can we grow our company uh, uh, you know, at the same time uh, by, by uh, supporting those, uh, those challenge? So clearly, uh, we have a couple of ways of doing it, and I'm gonna share some of them. First of all is, um, I'm sorry, So those are the four, uh, the four uh, you know, priority I just talked about. So growth in export is one. So how do we grow our company? One is we can do more export. So yes, when we do more export, for sure, it's good for, for us, you know, because we have the energy available. We can export more today. One of the challenge we have today is we're missing connections between United States, as an example, and Quebec to be able to bring more power. So we need more transmission line and we need to strategize together how do we beef up the actual network sometimes to be able to export more. So there's a real opportunity there. And of course the value into doing this is as again, we are very stable in terms of cost, but at the same time, we provide a solution to help reducing emissions. And one point that is very important, okay? We are not the enemy of wind. We are not the enemy of solar. We are partners, and this is a very, very important point because, you know, solar and wind, as an example, need a complement, okay, with hydroelectricity that's there. So if, if it's not sunny out there, if, it, if the wind doesn't blow, we can be there anytime, okay? We have the energy, so we need to work together 
And if we work together, then we'll provide more renewable power than if we just do hydro on one side and if we just do one. So if we all work together, there'll be more renewable energy available out there and we'll reduce our emission challenge uh, more and more. So that's a very important thing because sometimes people see us working against each other and I don't think it's the case. I don't think that's the approach we should have. We just bid right now, you know, about the NPT project. We just bid on the, on the big uh, three-state, uh, you know, uh, uh, bid that just take place between Rhode Island, uh, Massachusetts, and Connecticut. And we're bidding, of course, NPT, but we, we need to work. We bring that hydropower, but let's work with the wind uh, farm after and, and, the, uh, and the solar uh, people, you know, so that we can provide more together. We bid also a, a project called VGL, you know, which is actually with a, a developer in New York having wind coupling with our line and, and having uh, you know, all that renewable energy uh, going uh, into New England. So I think it's the, it, we need to uh, shift that way of thinking that it's one or the other. I think we're going to be able to do much more if we work together. Just to give you a bit of perspective uh, in terms of uh, renewable energy, uh, you know, to reduce uh, So on the left, you can see uh, uh, the United States, so more than a billion terawatt hour. And as you can see, coal is still about a third of that. Uh, despite some closing, natural gas is about a third and the rest nuclear 20%. If you look at Canada, which is the middle slide, 630 terawatt hours, <clears throat> and you can see that about two thirds of that uh, is, is hydropower, uh, but you realize that a lot of it is Hydro-Quebec because when you look at the slide on the right, we are producing 205. We actually can go, if, if there's a lot of rain in one year, up to 225, 230 uh, for one year. And it's been uh, raining a lot up north over the last couple of years, so we're in a good position to export more. And you see our hydropower is quite significant in terms of, uh, of, of present. People will say, hey, you guys produce 205. You know, you're just 8 million people. How you're, you're consuming a lot of energy. We have a third of that that is aluminum. We have a lot of aluminum industry, which are consuming a lot. Okay, so we've been able to keep our industry because we have very competitive price. And of course, it's been helping us in that, that sense. So, but we have that power generation. Uh, and, and it's good because that aluminum is produced with renewable energy too. So it gives you a bit of a, a picture of where we are. Um, so clearly, the second path after export, how we're going to grow our company, we are looking right now at acquisition outside Quebec. So it can be other Canadian provinces, can be in the US. So uh, we can be, I would say, anywhere in Americas. So we're looking at Americas right now as a priority. We're not saying no to the rest of the world, but we're putting like a more emphasis. I don't want to be in a situation where in, in three years we're in 25 country because I think this is going to be difficult to manage. So our approach is let's buy an, an existing asset and let's look at countries that have potential to grow. Then after we can go into construction and, and, and build around that asset that we build because we believe it's important in every country to well understand the legislation, how it works, how do you get a permit, how do the, uh, the, uh, tar the, the price of electricity is, is determined, all of that. So, so you don't want to be in 25 countries, you want to be maybe in five years in three, four, five countries that are strategic. So we help these countries to you know, uh, get a better footprint. We help this country to improve the reliability of their network and this is things we, we can, I think, uh, help to. Uh, so that's going to be important. So we're going beyond our borders and uh, we're going to be looking also elsewhere. We're looking actually at project in Europe. We're looking at, you know, some people are approaching us from Africa or from Asia. And uh, since we, we, we came back and mentioned that, uh, you know, we want to be back into that business because we used to do that. Some people that may not know we had about eight or nine, uh, uh, you know, asset out there. Uh, as an example, in Chile, we were actually owning and operating the whole network in Chile, uh, transmission network. And we did that, we did that well, I think, because the people in Chile are actually knocking at our door and say, you guys are back, so you want to do stuff with us. And there's other country also, a lot of other countries. So, so we want to help the challenge we're facing. It's good for us also because it's going to allow some growth. And I said, I mentioned earlier, it's a challenge. And, and we want to, uh, uh, you know, uh, increase that presence. Another piece also, I mentioned earlier that uh, we've developed a lot of technology over the years. Now, I just mentioned two examples here, and one of the things I want to do to grow our company, this is the third leg, is the commercializing of, of the advanced technology. So as an example, you see at the bottom here a battery. 
we all know that you know uh, storing uh, energy is is a challenge today in a lot of countries. We're very fortunate in Quebec because this is the water in the dam is how we store. Those are the big battery for us. But it's not a luxury that all the country have. So we've developed a new chemistry of battery, working with our partner Sony. And uh, that battery is being tested right now. And what is different about that battery, because a, a lot of other people are developing the same thing. But overall, if you look at all the other people developing batteries, after 3,000, 3,500 charge and recharge, the battery is finished. Cars can go between 10,000 and 20,000. So for the people that are purchasing that battery, you know, it's three to six times more in terms of life, in terms of cost per recharge and sh charge and recharge. So very interesting product. And the second also benefit of that product is safety. It's almost impossible to get that battery on fire compared to what exists today on the market. So what we're thinking here is to work with all the big utility in the world that face that challenge of storing energy. It can be for peak shaving. It can be for different application. And, and within that container, it's a 50, 53 foot long, actually, goes on a container on a truck. It's a big load. So you got the battery, of course, which are all little cells. But at the same time, in the middle of that, you got all the computer. Hydro-Quebec did develop all computer and software so that you can put this on the grid easily, of course, uh, with the different specifications. So we've, we've developed that technology going with the battery. So we're testing. We have one in test right now. We have two more being built. And uh, we think commercializing these battery in a few years from now and help, again, uh, the challenge that we're all, all facing. At the top, a lot of people don't know that we are uh, producing a, a electrical, we've developed an electrical motor, uh, you know, which today, actually, this year, we, we installed 700 of those last year in China because, you know, China has some quite big challenge. All their bus right now are moving from, you know, uh, regular bus to electrical buses and and they're using our engine for a lot of them okay not this is not the only one there we have competitor but we are gaining market share right now so 700 last year this year will be more than 3,000 probably up to 4,000 so there's significant growth for us and this is a, a, a technology that's been developed for many years uh, I like to see that it's kind of the Swiss uh, watch of, uh, of, en of electrical engine uh, and it performs very well. So we're developing technology, as I said earlier, and we're trying to help also the planet to get greener. So uh, we've mentioned earlier, so that's kind of our goal on the financial point of view. We're a $13.6 billion company. We, would, we see ourselves in 15 years to be doubling that, to doubling the size of Hydro-Quebec. We think we have the capability, uh, especially on the big hydro, building hydro or operating hydro, but also in, in terms of, uh, uh, you know, transmission. I, I would say this is a unique s uh, skill set that we have developed over the years, and I think we can help uh, other country or other company uh, uh, with that. So um, uh, I know it's a little fast, but I, I know we have a, we're a bit limited on time. So again, uh, you know, I know we're going to have a discussion. Uh, I don't know if it's taking place now or uh, right now. Okay, great. So. Feel free to ask any question. Thank you.